Okay, watch the the game uh, this year and in the uh, Sugar Bowl. Uh, everybody who, especially all of South Florida, very proud of what what the, that program has done, and uh, nobody has done it better over the last couple of years. And and not just uh, getting the kids from down this way, but assembling a tremendous staff and a tremendous football program. Uh, Charlie Strong, and he joins us this evening. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing good, Larry. What about yourself? Well. You know what I, I I saw you last year at the FIU after the FIU game. You didn't, you know, you it was one of those 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 faces of we'll take it, but it wasn't anywhere near what we're capable of, and it wasn't the best of weather. And then uh, I saw you that uh, to to begin the year uh, in in New Orleans, and wow, uh, what what a what a magical year for the program. What a, a growth. Uh, spurt for this program. Take us over the last year since you were here last. Well, Larry, if you, if you look at the way we started off, we had Kentucky here at home, and, and we played very well. And, and you're right. And I think I, the weather just didn't help us at all. I maybe think, uh, what, six games in the rain? You know, <laughs> not only the FIU game, but the Southern uh, Southern Miss game. Oh, my goodness. It was just a downpour, just water up above our ankles. But we found a way to go win both of those games. Probably the game that helped us more than anything, Larry, was losing to Connecticut. You, you always talk, people always talk about the loss. That how does it help you? That game helped us prepare and go win the Florida game because we did, we got thumped by uh, Syracuse and then we come back home to play a Connecticut team that we should have beaten and right. beat us here at home and, and it kind of get it was that eye opener because now we had to go to Rutgers and we go to Rutgers. Not with my best player being healthy, and that's Teddy Bridgewater from right there in Miami. Because you look at Teddy, he had a he had a bad ankle and a bad arm. So I said, my man beat him with one leg and one arm. But his performance that day, and then our backup quarterback, Will Stein, the performance that day was just it was it was unbelievable just to watch the way we uh, we competed and we competed as a football team. We won that game against Florida as a complete team because we went in that game, Larry. And I told our team, if you protect number five, that being Teddy Bridgewater. That we can block those two inside players of Easley and Floyd. I thought our wide receivers were good enough to win outside and just defensively don't give up the big play. I just didn't think Florida would drive the ball on us, but we just had to make sure that they drove the football and not give them the big play. And that day, it's that night, we played well enough and we played well and we won the football game. You know, Coach, when we talked a couple of years ago, getting that job, I mean, you, you came to a basketball school. I mean, you know, that's something that, that almost everybody, from, like from North Carolina down to, to, to you know, to, to every school that, that has basketball sitting there as a cornerstone. And it's awfully tough to get those people thinking football, but you win, and for some reason those people kind of forget that you didn't have that that huge tradition on the football field. What has it been like, the fan support in your area? Oh, the fans here are just unbelievable. I uh, <laughs> During the season, uh, you know, no one likes to get called out. And <laughs> we come home, and we're 9 and zero. Oh. And we come home to a uh, to a crowd that wasn't our own, our crowd. We didn't fill up the stadium, and I just told our fans, uh, I just don't understand how football things. I know it's senior day, and we can't go pack the stadium for our seniors when they've given us uh, four tremendous years and what they've done for this program here in the last three years. So we go to the Sugar Bowl, and I tell you, like it was unbelievable. We had thirty plus thousand fans. And they got there three or four days before the game, and every time we went out to practice, whenever our buses left that hotel, you would have thought that it, it was, it was a, a card march. It was so many fans there. And our fans helped us win that football game. We go to warm-up, and they were already in the stands, so you felt really comfortable because our players, at least they knew that they had some support that evening. Yeah, no doubt, Coach Charlie Strong joining us from Louisville. And Coach, you know, you talk about th- this program, and you know, while it didn't have that just unbelievable pass, it did have a lot of icons. And I know some of those icons. Uh, oh, one of them kept texting me during the game, uh, Sam Madison, who um, is just a, a great person. And uh, you know, I knew Sam had to have been somewhere in that in New Orleans watching that game because, you know, for for guys who come out of that program, think of all the years they're in the NFL and those teams don't do well and they're they're watching their USC's and they're watching their Florida's do well and then all of a sudden your alma mater gets a chance to be in the spotlight and uh, how many how many former players uh, just in general uh, have have come back uh, to, to try to you know be a part of this program 
You know what happened, Larry? When you win games, somehow your phone number just circulates and you get so many calls. <laughs> I guarantee you, after that game, I probably had over 200-plus messages. <laughs> but you know, you know, we come back to the hotel, and I'm sitting there with Tom Jackson. And right. Tom and I, and, there, and Derek Menefield, we're, we're sitting there talking. And Tom Jackson, he's like, Coach, I cried. I laughed. Yeah. I cried. I laughed. He's like, it was just so, so amazing. great amazing. for the school. And then Menefield was in there telling me, he said, Coach, we almost dropped this program. He <laughs> said that when he was playing, it got so bad that they had, instead of them giving them tape, they had ankle wraps. And they were ready to drop the program. And he said, just to see how far we've come in just a short amount of time, it's just it's unbelievable. Yeah, no doubt. You know, Coach, when you look at it, too, I mean, when you go to, you know, not take anything away from Blacksburg or some of those smaller towns, but when you do recruit, even in the SEC, you know, with the exception of a few schools, most of them are, you're, you're recruiting those kids to really small towns. You're recruiting somebody to you, now where you're at now to one of the most vibrant, most progressive cities probably in the southeast. Oh, it is. And, and what people don't realize, this is a city here. I mean, you have five major corporations. You have UPS headquarters is here. Uh, Papa John's Pizza is here. Dion with Pizza Hut, they're here. Louisville Slugger is here. You know, you run the Kentucky Derby. Mm-hmm. The, floor, the Ford plant that makes the big expeditions, they're here. So you have a lot to bring to this city, and it is a very vibrant city and a city that wants to win. You know, they want to get football going because now we're with us making the move to the ACC they feel like they're how important it is for everybody to to back this program. Yeah, yeah, and that it is, and and because you're, I mean, it's not going to take your strategy any different recruiting because you already recruit in in, in the areas that the that that, that conference is, that sits in. Um, talk about your your game plan when you go out. Let's say when your when your coaches go out, obviously you want a game plan to hit a lot of the Kentucky, Ohio areas and Tennessee's first. But uh, your success in Florida kind of precedes you a little bit. Do you do you kind of treat Florida? Florida as like an even even child in this uh, in this recruiting process. I treat Florida just like it, it is. It is because you, you look at Louisville. We had to do great here in the city of Louisville. We had to do great here in the uh, state of Kentucky. Then we go up into Ohio. Indiana's close enough. But now with us being in the ACC, Larry, what is allowed? You know, last year we were kind of upset that we didn't get in the Big Twelve. Sure. Now you're kind of glad you didn't because our recruiting. It goes down through uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, to Florida. And uh, now with what the success that we've had in this program, the players that we have taken out of South Florida, especially the Miami area, and all those players have had success. You know, you, you look at what Teddy's doing. You look at what Eli's doing. Right. You look at, you're looking at guys that have come out of the Northwest. You've got John Miller coming out of Central, who's been a starter for us. Keith Brown is coming out of New Orleans, who's been a starter for us. Uh, Deuce Johnson that comes out of Southridge, who's been a starter for us. But we had enough success with those players, and they've been very successful here. You know, you take a Burgess. Burgess' bro, uh, dad was a, a was a starter at linebacker Miami, at the University right? of Miami, and now he's a starter for us here. But you have player, young men that have been successful. So now when you go back to recruit, the only thing you say, well, look at the success that they had. So if they've been successful here, then it must be a special program for them to leave this city and go to Louisville. Yeah, and and I think that the homecoming didn't hurt, although, like I said, it was kind of rainy uh, for those kids to at least come home, you know, before a lot of their fans in the FIU game because, I mean, that just shows, you know, how – I mean, when you guys came out, everything was just a little bit bigger time than, than the FIU, you know, teams are used to seeing. I mean, this is a program now that has to be on that level. You guys got to be at that level, that next level. You just can't. You've got to be in for every top recruit, and everybody knows that. And I and I and I know when you came there, that was your idea. It was Larry to compete and to take a program where it needs to go. You had to compete at this at the highest level, and it does. You know what? Some you're gonna lose a lot of battles. We understand that. But it's not going to stop us from competing. And then the players that we do get, all we need to do there is develop. We just develop those players. And then once you develop those players, you get a chance to, to go go play these games. And when you go play the games, hey, you know what happens, guys? If we prepare the right way and, and we continue to build this program the right way and it's all about character and it's, it's about young men who want to go get a degree, and that's what's critical. You know what's so critical there is that all our players now, they're getting a degree from here. 
And that's what's critical. I, I look at their success on the football field, and I'm so happy. But it's off the field that, uh, that really makes me proud because to watch a young man. I had 10, 10 players that graduated mid-semester. I took nice. a player, Adrian Bouchel, who's at University of Florida with me. He, I bring him here. He comes here. We get to come at, from University of Florida here. And my man Bouchel, he graduated mid semester. So yeah, a former we, Pace we, we guy see, and a former. You see, yeah, the former Pace. Yeah, guy. former yeah. Monsignor Pace, and also he went That's out to exactly Texas. Right. I saw him at both places. Believe it or not, Coach, we're up against it. 